Hi guys, I'm Daisy Maldonado with Nocturnal. So nice to meet you guys and congratulations on the film. Thank you. Um, I'd love to know what your favorite scene was while filming this. It was definitely so fun to watch. So what was it like um, participating in? Cheech, you can go first. Oh, the favorite scene? Actually, it was actually the, uh, the uh, uh, trampoline uh, bouncy house uh, dodgeball scene because it, w it was terrifying for me because, you know, like actors, when they're really uh, 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 nervous about a scene, they, it, it raises an energy level, you know, to, to actually do it well. So I was kind of concentrated and I, and I came out of it alive. That's, you know. A plus. A plus. <laughs> it works well for me. <laughs> Jane, what about you? Uh, I would say the dodgeball scene, definitely. But I also um, really enjoyed my very first scene that I shot with uh, Robert De Niro, uh, where he couldn't deal with the checkout thing, because it's just a lovely scene. It sets the tone for, for what happens in the movie. And um, I kept thinking, oh, I'm, I'm playing a, you know, a cashier and, uh, and I've got my cashier outfit on. Well, while I was waiting to do the scene, I was kind of wandering around the store slightly and people kept coming up to me thinking I actually worked there. You know, giving me things to be returned, asking me where this was kept, could they get the money back? Is there a guarantee on there? I'm like, I didn't have a chance to actually get nervous working with Robert because they grabbed me off the, off the aisles and said, we'll take over here. You go over there and, you know, please go and act it now. So, you know, feel free not to sell. So that, that was amusing to me, but dodgeball was the most fun, that's for sure. Definitely. And in what ways do you guys think that the grandfather's um, participation in this generational war almost was a healing experience for him? Jane, we'll start with you. You know, I think it's very hard for um, an old independent person to suddenly have to give up their independence and live with their kids, especially when nobody wants them there. You know, as much as they love them, they don't want them there all the time, and especially like that, that, the young kid. And I think, um, I think it, it, it made him, um, it gave him a, a new zest for life. You know, he got hold of his friends and said, you know, I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to combat this. I'm, I'm going to engage. And I think the idea of the engagement um, developed a communication between them. And I think he, he realized, the grandfather realized that he still had some spunk left in him and some friends and some fun, and he could be naughty and at the same time loving and appreciate. Definitely, what about you, Cheech? Well, I, I reach out to my grandkids. Uh, I have three of uh, 13 to seven. And right now, more than ever, you know, because they live in another state and I really miss them. And you realize time goes by and it's, you're not going to live forever. And what's the most thing, what's the thing you can do to instill most memories in them? And that's the fun part. They just came to my house here on the desert and, uh, and it, it was great. I mean, we, we, so we plan it every year at the same time for them to come out and we'll plan an activity, a specific activity, and, and they really remember it. It was really, it was amazing. There was this amazing picture we just took of all of us at this long table having dinner outside. And, and I just, you know, you, when you see one of those, you go, that's going to be, I'm going to keep that picture forever. You know, so it really, really binds you. Definitely. Um, well, the movie is centered around pranks that are kind of undergone with uh, Peter and his grandfather. I'd love to know what the craziest prank you've ever participated in or done. You know, I'm not a prankster. I, I, I always fear repercussions. So I, <laughs> I generally don't prank. Um, I did have uh, one of my groomsmen in my wedding prank another one of my groomsmen, and I was aware of it. So I guess I was complicit. But uh, he, he short pantsed him, basically, uh, <laughs> from when we rented the tuxedos. Uh, he made sure that the guy, the guy was like six foot four, and he gave him pants that were made for like a five foot seven guy so they were way flooded and they went up to midway on his shins and then of course he had to take pictures in those pants and uh, it's forever memorialized in our wedding pictures and he was in a full panic he was like i can't you know you're trying to call the tuxedo shop and because it looked like it was just a mistake made by them and of course we had regular pants his, his pants waiting for him but we had to make him sweat it out for a while so right, what a memory for your wedding day <laughs> It gets talked about every time we get together, so it must, <laughs> yeah. must, be, it must have worked. I'm sure it's a great story. And um, there's many messages um, that kind of are happening in the film. You know, your character has his own personal struggle and internal war, you may say. Um, what's the main message you hope your audience will take away from this? Um, loving your family. 
finding a way to to coexist uh, uh, you know finding ways to connect with your family finding ways to connect in whatever form that takes hopefully it takes a form of something productive <laughs> and, and mutually beneficial but uh, family connection finding ways to connect right definitely and do you have a favorite scene or standout experience that happened on set uh, you know, I think the, there's some big laughs uh, and some enjoyable moments. There's some heartwarming moments. Being a comedian, I always like the laughs. So, you know, I think there's a scene where uh, my father-in-law, played by Mr. De Niro, um, finds himself uh, hanging from part of the house. Uh, that's quite interesting. I don't want to give away too much, but uh, when he's hanging from the gutter on the house, it's a very interesting scene. And last question, in three words, why should people watch this film? Cast, family, laughs. Perfect. Oh, Congratulations you. on the film, you guys. It was so fun to watch. Thank, um, you. thank you. I'm wondering what your favorite scene to film was. Uh, Oaks, you can go first. Ah, oh, my favorite scene to film. Um, I don't know. There's. It was definitely a, a very interesting dynamic because I had never really done anything like comedic or anything like that before. So obviously most of the, the prank sequences can be pretty fun. Um, but there are a few that were, I guess, more, more fun than others. I, I might go with the, the trampoline dodgeball scene, which was just a lot of fun because of the, the people that were around during that day and um, just everybody having a lot of fun, having a lot of energy. Uh, just definitely had, uh, you know, like that positive element to it. I'm going to cheat a little bit and say the music video aspect that we shot, which isn't totally part of the film, but it kind of is in the end credits. That was super fun to kind of just have a day where we all like had a dance party and, and had fun and sing along to the song. Um, to be honest, I had so much fun throughout the whole thing, but I think being able to be musician artist Laura for that one day was really cool. And Laura, your character kind of had this turmoil with her boyfriend and your mother in the film. I'm curious to see what advice you'd have to like any girl who is in a similar situation. Uh, I'd say communication is always key, even and especially with your parents. I think a lot of times that is not the case, um, understandably so, especially when it comes to love lives. Um, but it's always going to come down to talking about it with your parents and just having great communication. And in the beginning of the film, the grandfather reads the letter um, that was sent by Peter and kind of ignores it. Why do you think ultimately he decided to kind of pursue this war with him? Um, Oaks, we can start with you. I think that there is, um, I mean, Peter, I think something interesting about Peter is that he really doesn't back down. And that's shown in, in both um, Peter and also in his grandfather. But both of them, the reason they butt heads so much is because they're so similar as people. And I think that the, the reason that there's that much turmoil is because they both don't want to back down. They both kind of want to be the one to take home the crown. And I think that that's really interesting and it shows. Yeah. Yeah. I also think uh, what I love that our movie touches on, which is so relatable is grief and you know how do you move on when you someone is not part of your life anymore and I think Ed ultimately does decide to pursue this to kind of take him out of this funk that he's been in since his wife has passed away um which I think is a beautiful thing because symbolically he's turning to family to get himself out of that funk definitely and finally um what do you guys hope the audience takes away from the film Laura you kind of just mentioned it but I'll start with you yeah, you know, I think overall, uh, there's a level that we all love and appreciate with film and television right now, which is escapism, just escaping into something that can take us away from the crazy world we're in. But I think also overall, the bond of family uh, is so strong, no matter how crazy your family is, you love each other. So lean into that love. Definitely. Yeah, I, I think I would have to agree with with that, as well as I think Something that I really want people to take away from this is just be happy and being able to um, to have something that brings them that happiness during this time. Because obviously it's been very difficult for a lot of people, I'm sure. And hopefully that this is an escape for some people and 
they can just have a bit of a laugh.